Hello everyone and welcome back to another Ruby on Rails video. It has been a while. In this video, I'm going to be introducing you to the core concepts of Ruby on Rails. So we're going to take a look at the main things you need to know. This video is directed directly towards beginners who haven't really used the framework before. I'm making this video because I find that there aren't really that many great resources for the basics and the core concepts of Ruby on Rails. So that's what I'm going to cover inside of this video. So let's get started. All right, everybody. So the first thing I'm going to do is run Rails new. And we're going to generate a new app called my new app. Now, an initial thing that you might not understand is that when you're actually typing this first command, you can specify the type of database you want to use. You can specify if you want to use Tailwind CSS or not. And you can do some more commands right after this command in the same line. So I didn't do that. I just did the standard Rails new my app. And so I'm going to be generated a standard and not changed Rails app. So as you can see, the app is currently generating and it's generating a bunch of files. Okay, so now that we've actually generated that app, it took about two minutes. What I'm gonna do is do CD my new app and then we're gonna actually have a look at what it created. So I'm gonna do code dot to open it up in Visual Studio Code. It's actually gonna install Visual Studio Code. So while that's happening, I'll talk you through what's actually going on. So it created a schema.rb and a schema.rb is essentially the representation of the database. So now that it's actually opened in Visual Studio Code, I can give you a better downlook and a better overlook, a better overview of all of our files. So as you can see, we have our app folder, we have our config folder, we have our DB folder. And if you're a beginner to Rails, which this video is for beginners, you're probably not gonna know what all of these files are. So the most important one to understand is this folder called the app folder. This is where most of the work actually happens. So this is where we have our controllers, which is where we have our server side logic. Then we have our views, which is where we have our HTML.ORB files, which is essentially our stuff that we actually serve to the user. And this might contain the styles as well. And then we have our models, which is essentially what communicates to the database. So imagine we have like a model called a user model and we can create as many user models as necessary and each user model has certain attributes attached to it, such as email or name. So for example, so this is the most important folder called the app folder. And then we have the config folder, which is also extremely paramount to your Rails knowledge. And the most important file in here, I would have to say, is probably the roots because it tells you where the views go and where the actual actions of the user correlate to. So it kind of defines the actions of the user and where which files they correlate to in here. Then we have inside of initializers, we have some more stuff, but the roots file in here is the most important. Database.yaml is also very important. And schema.rb, which is not generated right now, but once we add a migration, it will be generated. So guys, this is just a general overview of the files. Uh, as you work with Rails, you'll get to know more and more about the file system. Don't be too worried about it. Just look at tutorials, ask ChatGPT which files you need to be using, and then you'll be okay. All right, so the next thing I want to cover is a scaffold, because Rails scaffold is like one of the most powerful features of this beautiful framework. So I'm going to run Rails G, and we're going to run uh, Rails G scaffold, and then I'm going to say post, and then we can just add some, some attributes. So I will say title and description. So what we're doing here is creating something called a scaffold, and essentially a scaffold is something that creates a CRUD functionality in your application. Now, what is a CRUD functionality? Well, a CRUD functionality stands for create, read, update, and destroy. And so what this means is that we can create, read, update, and destroy a certain model with its attributes. In this case, the model is called post, and it has two attributes called title and description. So that means we're gonna be able to create, read, update, and destroy post, posts, with titles and descriptions. So I'm gonna run enter, and then we're gonna run another command called rails db migrate, which will actually migrate this command to the database. It will kind of save this file and actually run it. So we created a migration and now we ran the migration. So I'll go to Visual Studio Code, and uh, you will actually be able to see what has just happened. So now if we go to app, we can have a look at the new files that I actually created. So in controllers, we have a new controller here for the server side logic, which handles actually creating the posts. Then in the views, we have another folder called the post folder, which handles the, the views. So that the views is kind of like the HTML, which is what is actually served to the user. So we have some HTML here, but obviously it's HTML.ARB, which is what Ruby uses. And then if we go to DB and we look at the schema, as I said, this is the representation of the databases of what's going on, not the actual commands, but kind of the structure of the database. So as you can see, we have a create table posts with two attributes, title and description. 
So now that we've done that, what we can do is I'm going to run Rails S and I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code and go to config roots.rb, which you can do by just doing control P roots.rb. And then inside of here, we're going to go roots post hashtag index. And if I uncomment this, now what we're going to do is actually root to this page, which is essentially going to go to the views. It's going to go to the post hashtag index, and then it's going to run and show this to the user as the root page, as the home page of the website. And then if we go, and it will also show this. So it will say at post to the post.all, because the index of this corresponds to the index of the post folder. So the index.html.erb of this post folder corresponds with the index action or the index method of this controller here. So now, now that we've done that and we've run Rails S and we go to our application, by the way, Maliki Rails to 10K subscribers, please subscribe. It will be very nice. Then what we're going to do is go to localhost 3000. And as you can see, now we have some sort of an application and we can create, read, update and destroy posts. So I'm going to say first post ever, create post. And we can edit it. We can read it. Read it just means kind of view it. We can edit it, which means update, and we can destroy it, which means delete. So create, read, update, and destroy. Very important to understand what that is. Very simple concept to grasp, CRUD. Let's create, read, update, and destroy. All right, guys, before we continue, just a little word from our sponsor, Codespy.ai. All right, so I've been testing this tool lately called Codespy.ai, and I actually think it's pretty interesting. Basically, it tells you when a piece of code was written by AI. You paste in your code, whether it's Python, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, whatever, and it flags the lines that were probably generated by something like Copilot or ChatGPT. I ran it on a Java project I've been playing with, part AI, part written by me, and it picked up the AI bits almost instantly. It even flagged a few things I didn't realize AI-ish. What's actually nice is that it's not one of those gimmicky tools that tries to rewrite your code or fix things automatically. It just shows you what's likely AI generated. And that's kind of useful because those sections are usually where bugs or outdated calls pop up. For smaller dev teams or freelancers, especially if you're using AI assistance to speed up delivery, this kind of tool makes a lot of sense. It's like a QA safety net. The faster you can catch issues, the fewer client revisions you get, the more time you save overall. They've also got a version for medium-sized teams where managers can keep an eye on what's AI generated before merging everything together. So yeah, if you're curious, it's worth checking out. Just go to codespy.ai. I'll drop the link below. I thought it was genuinely helpful. Okay, so now that you understand CRUD functionality, I'm going to introduce you to migrations. So migrations in Ruby on Rails is a way to change the schema.rb. The schema.rb, again, is the, my, is the structure of the database, the representation of the database. So if I run clear now, we should actually be able to clear our terminal. And now I will run Rails G migration, add email to posts. And then we're going to do email as a string. So what this is going to do is create a migration. Remember, a migration is a way to change the database. And then the migration is going to be called add email to posts, email as string. Now, a funny thing in Ruby on Rails is that when you add add email to posts here, as such as the title of the migration, this actually has some functionality. And this, and the reason I did it like add with a capital A and then E with a capital E and then T with a capital T is because this is really important. If you don't do this, you're not gonna get the functionality. But now if I generate this, we're gonna, we're gonna see what's gonna generate, right? So it's gonna generate a migration. And if we go to Visual Studio Code and then go to DB, and then go inside of here, we go to migrate and it houses all of our migrations. As you can see, there's a previous one from this scaffold we ran. And then now there's an add email one. And now if we go inside of here, as you can see, we have add column to post email string. So it's really simple to understand, right? What this file is going to do, if we run this file, if we run Rails DB migrate, it's going to go to schema.rb. It's going to add an email attribute to the post column, to the post table, sorry. So now then, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to run Rails DB migrate. And then it's going to do exactly what I just said. And if we go to schema.rb, as you can see, while that code is running, it's going to add an email attribute at the bottom of this table. Right, guys, that is going to be the end of this video, the top three core concepts in Ruby on Rails. Thank you guys for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe. There's going to be more videos in the future.